మాలా సుధా కుంభ విబోధ ముద్ర విద్యావిరాజత్కరవారి జాత అపార కారుణ్య సుధాంబురాశంశీ శారదాంబాం ప్రణతోస్మి నిత్యం శంకారూపేణ మర్చిత్తం పంకేకృతమూజ్య కింకరీయ సమాయా శంకరాచార్యమాశ్రయే ప్రహ్లాదవరదో దేవో యో నృసం అపరో హరి నృసుమోపాసకం నిత్యం తం నృసుమ్మ గురుం భజే శ్రీ సచ్చిదానంద శివాభినవ్య నృసింహ భారత్య పితాన్ యతీంద్రాన్ విద్యానిథీన్ మంత్రనిథీన్ సదాత్మనిష్ఠాన్ భజే మానవ శంభురూపాన్ సదాత్మధ్యాన నిరతం విషయేభ్య పరాన్ ముఖం నౌమిశాస్త్రేషు నిష్ణాతం చంద్రశేఖర భారతీ వివేకినం మహాప్రజ్ఞం ధైర్యోదారక్షమానిధి సదా వినవ పూర్వం తం విద్యాతీర్థగురుం భజే భారతీ కరుణాపాత్రం భారతీ పదభూషణం భారతీ పదమారూఢం భారతీ తీర్థమాశ్రయే విద్యా వినయ సంపన్నం వీతరాగం వివేకినం వందే వేదాంత తత్వజ్ఞం విదుశేఖర భారతీ గురుమాత మేడం అలిమేలు an outstanding contributor to the nation's growth shri mahalingam and to outstanding contributors again in nation building and in school building as part of trustees shri l ganesh and shri krishnan distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen and all our well wishers <coughs> at 58 it was an emotional moment the way young children greeted on my birthday something i will cherish in my heart in my life i only wished my wife had been here she would have cherished it more somebody who has traveled along with me all the while in bringing me to whatever i am today i owe a lot to her i'll just go and convey your sentiments and thanks a lot india as a nation we are standing on a moment of great joy and pride just 3 days ago or 4 days ago out of 195 nations in this world india is the first country to land on the moon through the south pole relentless not withstanding we failed in 2019 the relentless pursuit by the honorable prime minister because he is in charge of ministry of space he is the minister he is the minister in charge of space and the department of space and isro the scientists of isro could prove that we are second to none in science in space in technology and in growth and development we could fly our national flag there we could imprint our ashoka chakra on the uh laps of the moon it's a great achievement and therefore a great source of inspiration to every child here maybe after 25 years somebody may fly directly in an helicopter for an annual day as a chief guest from one of the students from here i expect that to happen <coughs> there are two ways of addressing school children or parents in an annual school day one is to keep progressing in the path of growth development technology and or talk about inspiring biographies of great historians and great achievers the other alternative way is this is an institution endowed and blessed filled with blessings of acharyas of the shingeri peetham and therefore why not we start the basics because this is an institution which believes in value education therefore we have chosen the second alternative today parents and children children should know what you gain out of value education all of us know what we gain of out of science all of us know what we can gain out of growth and development but what do you gain out of value education that's going to be the next few minutes talk today as human beings irrespective of age especially as parents 
what do we aspire with our children think for a minute we want them to be extremely happy we want them to be extremely wealthy we want them to get the best of name fame recognition we want them to be liked by everyone we want them to be very proud it's common elementary so this is the aspiration every mother every father nurses and travels through their children completely justified totally justified now how do we make it happen world always gives you alternatives that's the beauty of nature it always gives you every point of time in your life two options option a option b option a option b so should we fill our lives and the aspirations of our children should we fill it just with needs wants desires expectations more aspirations and more success is that what we want our children to be so to make them very successful in life it's a very justified uh, aspiration ah do we want our children not just successful but lead a good life so the choice is between a successful life and not just a successful life but a good life how do we choose it and what is that that differentiates the one from the other simple <laughs> all that we need to endeavor in a school all that we need to endeavor at our homes as parents is just to build three intrinsic qualities amongst our children nothing more just three simple intrinsic qualities nothing to do with science nothing to do with growth and development nothing to do with mathematics what are those three qualities one are you ready to make your children lead a simple life fundamental simplicity are you ready i'll just cite you one example we can fill it with millions of examples but this school is associated with tatas so i'll try to cite examples from tatas for any lawyer nani palkiwala is a bishma pitamaha for us you could not have seen a lawyer for past 500 years and you may not see a lawyer of a jurist of his eminence for next 500 years he's an outstanding class by himself he was offered supreme court judgeship declined he was he was offered attorney general declined he was offered ministership declined but when janata party came to power when the prime minister made a request you should now go to america as an ambassador just for my sake for 2 years he agreed just for the sake of the nation see a, a, an ambassador is in the rank of an additional secretary you imagine all the three other jobs which was assigned and he threw it up he took it up and one of the instances that is recorded in his biography is there was a dinner meet jimmy carter was then the president of us and his mother attended the dinner meet and she was talking with nani palki wala and said i like indian chapels you know what nani ji did ask somebody to bring a paper a pencil ask jimmy carter's mother to stand on the paper and he drew the whole sketch and said i'll ensure that the chapels of the size reaches you as soon as possible ambassador of you india and an outstanding jurist of eminence judges will rise when he stands up to speak and he bends simple is one important quality in life 
द सेकेंड क्वालिटी इज रिमाइनिंग हम्बल आर वी रेडी टू मेक आर चिल्ड्रन आर वी रेडी टू मोल्ड आर चिल्ड्रन इन ह्यूमिलिटी अगेन आई साइड टू एग्जाम्पल्स आर अदर थ्री एग्जाम्पल्स I had before taking these assignments I had worked with Tatas and had the chance to work very closely with both Ramudre sir and also Chandrashekharan sir didn't get that opportunity to work with Mr Mahalingam <laughs> would have loved to do that utter humility the kind of humbleness they have all come from the scratch and rose up to this rank and they have never forgotten their moorings and the past see i was astonished when the young girl read the biography of mr mahalingam what is that he has not achieved and how humble he remains as a chairman of this institute of this college humility are we ready to be humble in life the third quality <coughs> are we ready to be noble in life simple humble and noble for nobility we can start example starting from bhagwan shri rama because this land is filled with people who carried nobility throughout their missions but i am going not going to cite from itihasas or puranas or from history we have an outstanding example in the form of alimelu madam today <clears throat> any student in city of madras would not have escaped studentship without going through that cycle under her in some form or the other that's why when she calls up and say are you free can you come for this just find out has any chief guest has any, has anyone ever refused her invitation i want to know it's not possible nobility is a magnet it like attract it's a power by itself it's a storehouse of power nobility leads you to extraordinary abilities it will make you do extraordinary things the minutest details in an arrangement at 80 plus she is able to work out people became senile at this age but as she is sitting here greeting all of you and reading a report so she deserves really a louder one yeah. i missed studentship because i was in madurai but my son daughter and son in law were all her students so we are very proud that we <laughs> so are we ready for these three things in our children that's the question this is value education it's not rocket science it's not a very complex phenomena it's something which is so inherent in our gene in our dharma now the question is because we are in an age where we probe we are in an age we contest oh, how do you say this is right is our nature now because liberal democracies give you that right to contest anything right or wrong you can speak anything you need not be right because you are right to speak there is it's, it's no longer you should speak right things you can speak anything because that is your right this is liberal democracy today so in this era you will contest what is that if i don't do quite right quite justified so they say if you don't have these three attributes in a child and parents inflict an overdose of protective nurturing in the name of love and care two or three things are bound to happen to that child whether you like it or not the child grows not stronger the child becomes very very brittle 
test it but first crack it will it will break it won't stand up and face because you are protecting if we have not taught them simplicity we have not taught them humility we have always taught them start contest question you have every right to occupy the space and you should only be there everybody see walking on the road is not competition everybody walks but racing on a car is a competition there is a difference between walking and racing so we have we have molded our children not to walk on the street we are, we are molding our children to race so it's a competition so you will win you will lose you can't win all the time you can't lose all the time so how do you mold your child it goes brittle one two it develops along with us as parents what do we do as human beings ask only acharya repeatedly puts this questions to sishyas can you rewrite your past you have no control can you script your future yourself we have no control but our mind either travels in the past based on experience and therefore starts to meditate on future with sheer fear 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 of the future fear of the unknown is today modern children problem see when i get briefed i had a recent experience in the supreme court a 27 year old child wonderful she is in her capacity one hour she briefs you can go and argue without reading anything that extraordinary she is she sits by my side when we were arguing a case the other side starts arguing she kept on nagging me over my no no he is wrong he is right i said can you please allow me to listen to him because i have to respond you have briefed me thanks a lot this is all i said out of sheer impatience for a minute she started to cry in the court so i had to first spend 15 minutes handling her <laughs> emotion just 27 28 year old just not able to take a comment so protective she find feel so embarrassed so fear and three once you become brittle once you are search in the fear of the unknown you are bound to not have the courage to face challenges we lost landing on the moon in 2019 we didn't lose courage we kept on he said we will have to do it with just 650 crores of investment we have landed our rover into the moon within 4 years time challenge are you just ask this question to ourselves is our child prepared is she or he brittle verify that is she or he fearsome if she or she ready to take up a challenge and fight because where does this lead to all these three psychologically puts a child in the defensive and it develops therefore two qualities with the able support we are all doing good to our children we are all thinking we are doing good it's a problem with us what are the two qualities it develops a child which has these three challenges becomes extremely self centered and selfish and remember our value system says extraordinary achievements have always been done god chooses extraordinary achievements to be done only by such people who are selfless take history take any example any example if god has chosen you to do something extraordinary you ought not to be selfish otherwise you will you will lose that race you will you will not be the candidate fit enough to do that job selfishness is antithesis to performing extraordinary feat whereas a child develops selfishness and the second output because of these three brittle qualities is the child grows thinking it is its wisdom and its right grows in ahankara ego 
see the difference between a simple humble and a noble person and a person with ego is only this a simple humble noble person you pour any extraordinary success on him or her it will be like this coat they will wear it for the stage the moment it's over they will take the coat and hang it the coat has to be only ultimately where it deserves to be they will never take it to their head you can't be an egoistic person and also be a simple person you can't be a very egoistic person and also be a noble person it's not possible they are they are antithesis to each other so minus these three qualities we develop our children very selfish and we make them bloat in ego and we start supporting them now what happens to such a child in the world a it starts to misjudge world that's the problem because it starts to judge from ego it starts to judge from its own perception what world should be instead of what world it is it doesn't perceive it wants to perceive the world its way it dictates the world has to be like this so it perceives the world on its own effort therefore it misjudges it is misinterprets it and finds world is causing injustice to me and all of us when the child cries when the child breaks we immediately rush to the child to support it psychologically to get the child out of the breakdown so we add our own doses to this injustice and make the child feel yeah yeah world is causing you injustice only nothing else have we done these three basics correct then there will be a dialogue between the child and the parent the child and the student so when we reach this scale we are finally coming down to value education what is value education how do you get these three qualities being simple humble and noble you can do that only when you can do two things in life are you able to stand up and speak satya are you able to stand up and practice dharma the two strong pillars of our of our of our life because india is a way of life india is just bharat mata is not a nation we don't identify as a nation we identify as a form of divinity we identify here as a way of life so and what does parashurama say to karna when he identifies who he is he says look here you can never achieve success out of falsehood you can never achieve peace out of falsehood so success and peace will not come to you if you practice falsehood simple what does drona say to dhridrashtra look here i can't come and teach your sons here if they have to learn they will have to come to my ashram so that's the place where they have to learn and he gives an example you can serve a cooked food on a gold vessel no problem but you can't use a gold vessel to cook it won't work it just won't work so when you want to learn you need to learn discipline you need to learn courage you need to learn confidence and what does kunti say to pandavas look here you can lose anything in life kingdom kingdom don't bother but don't lose your confidence because if you lose confidence then it saps your power and ability to stand up and come back again loss of courage is a huge loss so don't do that so we should wind up in the next 2 minutes the difference when you, this is as far as satya is concerned what is dharma how do you practice dharma what see dharma is dharma is not identifiable dharma is a way of all that we have known but dharma also has some certain ingredients see we should have desire everybody is entitled to a desirous ambitious life otherwise you can't progress but fill your life not just with desire but also with love let children know the value of human love because every child is gifted automatically on its birth without any discrimination by god two qualities being lovable and being compassionate these are two who is the real example every mother is an example of love and compassion in this world 
and every philosophical guru is an embodiment of love and compassion so it is something which is found in in a human form we are not talking theory so if you fill your children's mind with love instead of only desire it will sprout dharma if you fill the child's mind with compassion then it will slowly eliminate selfishness so an un- a selfish desire is always very very undesirable and therefore what are the principles of dharma compassion at its roots a heart filled with love a mind filled with courage a buddhi filled with righteousness and a human body ready to serve a good cause people here on the stage ask them without sacrifice have they come up to this level ask them when you find time interview them you cannot come and sit in this place unless you have sacrificed something that's you have you have lost something which is precious for a bigger objective in life so compassion at its roots love filled heart a courageous mind a righteous buddhi and a body prepared to serve a cause is all that we call in our dharma as value based education nothing else the nation believes in it and the ruling government believes in it and this institution believes in it and that's why we chose this time to speak on this topic because this whole place when guru mata almelu madam wanted to actually donate her place to the acharya and retire 28 years ago god's design reversed her she said you can't retire now this is not the time for you to call quits so it was reconveyed and now a seed of blessing was sown in this place in 1995 on 6th june by acharya and today it's a banyan with 36 students now we have reached 1030 and with such a huge developing area the next 30 years will see milestone after milestone through this institution and its progress all of us are going to see it through our eyes it's bound to happen an institution which has the blessing of a divine spiritual guru will never go wrong when acharya steps in it can transform barren lands into huge universities barren lands into huge factories barren land into huge ashrams we have seen all that in our lives and this is one such example where a small piece of land now looks like a huge banyan tree and continues to grow with a huge capacity of auditorium right coming in front of you by in the next one year what more so parents and students are blessed i need to part and i need to therefore give a word also to teachers no institution grows without its team and a school can never grow without its teachers with folded arms i offer my pranams because each one of you is a great guru and your role model is guru mata lemelu madam think of her unless see you could have chosen anything in your life for your own personal choice a teaching job is a job of sacrifice it's a job of patience it's a job which looks for long time journey to go ahead with because tamil la solirke eni toni annavi nartanga you can climb on a ladder the ladder stays there you can go on a boat but boat only cross crosses between the river it doesn't cross the bank a teacher will keep on training children and they will all go she will keep on seeing only more and more of mahalingams and ganesh in in life she will be what she is and nartanga will facilitate digestion but it is very hard to digest 
so a teacher's life is a life of sacrifice but sacrifices have unique rewards in god's kingdom may not be in human kingdom but in god's kingdom have that belief so my humble prayers to each teacher assembled in this school and to you that it is you who will ultimately transform the success story into a good story a story which will stay on forever i once again thank uh, alamelu madam mr ganesh mr mahalingam each one of you uh, for this wonderful opportunity it's a very emotional day being my birthday also and being in the divine presence of acharya it's nothing more looking forward to acharya's visit soon here and looking forward to seeing a chandramouli sura puja either here or in the new auditorium in the in the years to come and may acharya's blessing reverberate rent deep be deep rooted and protect each one of you and may we all lead a life of peace and prosperity sada shiva samarambham shankaracharya madhyamam asmat acharya paryantam vande guru paramparam i offer this humble talk at the lotus feet of jeshtam ha sannidhanam maha sannidhanam and sannidhanam thank you so much please